Good afternoon and thank you for joining us for this briefing on COVID-19 and our local response. Joining me again is interpreter Margie Propp and thank you so much Margie for being here today. And thank you to all of you for tuning in to these briefings. We wanna remind everyone to please visit our website at covid19.lincoln.ne.gov where you can learn more about how to protect yourself, your loved ones and our community. For today's update, we want to share that we have had nine new people in Lincoln diagnosed with lab-confirmed cases of COVID-19 today. Those nine individuals bring Lincoln's total number of cases to 106. You can find more data about these cases and the testing we are doing in Lincoln at our online data dashboard at covid19.lincoln.ne.gov. I want to thank you to the media for helping us get the word out about that dashboard. And here to provide an update on these individuals and the investigations currently being done by the health department is Health Director Pat Lopez. Good afternoon. Uh, we have the nine new cases in Lincoln today are six women and three men ranging in age from a young child to a person in their 50s. We are investigating and identifying close contacts. Three Lancaster County residents are hospitalized at this time, and one is currently on a ventilator. Nebraska now has 1,822 cases and 45 deaths. And again, one of those deaths was one of our community members. Lancaster County positivity rate increased slightly 
uh, to 3.9% now. The state is also up slightly to 10.5%, and the national rate continues to be about 20%. We often mention the work of the health department with contact investigations during these daily briefings. Contact investigation or contact tracing, as you may be hearing now, is often referred to. This is a co core disease control measure we employ at the health department, and it, it is a key strategy for preventing further spread of COVID-19. Contact tracing is not something new, and it's not unique to COVID-19. We use it all the time to help control the spread of many reportable communicable diseases in our community. Contact tracing is critical to protect our community from further spread, and we believe that this contact tracing has played a major role in reducing the spread locally. People have been staying home isolated and self-quarantined when asked by our staff. Thank you, Director Lopez, and thank you to all of the Lincoln Lancaster County Health Department folks who are taking on that vital responsibility of contact tracing. Uh, and again, thank you to all of our residents for taking our health department recommendations and guidelines so seriously and helping to keep our community safe. Many of our residents and businesses are asking how we will know when it is safe to lift our directed health measures. Uh, to paraphrase Dr. Fauci, we don't decide the timeline, the virus decides the timeline. In other words, our local health department will continue to rely on our local data to make decisions that prevent the spread of COVID-19 and keep us all safe. Some of the key indicators our public health officials will continue to evaluate include our COVID-19 case rates, the strength of our healthcare system, and our local public health capacity. Which, what this means is that they need to see a declining number of daily cases over at least a two-week period. They need to feel confident that our healthcare system has enough beds, enough ventilators, and enough staff to manage COVID-19 cases and future potential outbreaks. And they need to have the resources to do the contact tracing that Director Lopez described. The ability to rapidly mobilize our public health resources to do contact tracing in the event of a future outbreak is key to containing the virus and preventing its further transmission. Contact tracing, along with its important companion piece of expanded testing, is what will enable us to isolate sick individuals, quarantine their close contacts, and thereby prevent further transmission of the virus. By doing this, we are able to, as former CDC Director Tom Frieden puts it, to put the virus in a box, which is why contact tracing is key to the process of being able to gradually relax our current restrictions and reopen the economy. Uh, we want to remind everyone today, of course, that with our community-acquired cases of COVID-19 here in Lincoln, there is a risk of exposure anytime you're out in the community or in public places where others are present. And we also want to remind you that drive-through testing is available. It's offered by both CHI Health, St. Elizabeth, and by Bryan Health. Yesterday, 110 tests were completed. But as we have been saying, we have the capacity to do 150 tests per day. If you have the symptoms of COVID-19, a fever, a cough, a shortness of breath, you can get tested now. Simply take the online risk assessment at chihealth.com or bryanhealth.com. The testing is safe and easy and quick, with results coming back now in about 48 hours. We are counting on those of you with symptoms to get tested, and we're counting on everyone uh, to protect yourself and others by staying home, staying at least six feet from others, washing your hands, and wearing face coverings. Together, by doing these important steps, we will beat this virus. Today's briefing will move on and focus on ways we can help our children continue to learn and stay engaged while school facilities and buildings are closed. And while transitioning to remote learning and physical distancing is essential to keep our families safe and healthy, it can be especially hard for children. In partnership with some special guests who are here today from LPS and our community learning centers, we want to offer some strategies that parents can undertake during this difficult time to make things a little bit easier for our youngest ones. 
Um, first, we heard yesterday when we were discussing well-being, how important and helpful it is to have a daily routine right now. And this is especially true as we work to support our children's education. Education experts tell us to create, as much as possible, a routine for learning at home. They emphasize that we should try to ensure our children keep consistent bedtimes and get up in the morning at the same time, Monday through Friday. Structure the day to allow for learning and free time, healthy meals and snacks, as well as physical activity. And while routines are important, of course, and we're emphasizing them, it is okay to allow some flexibility based on your day. We all need to give ourselves some grace as we navigate the challenge of supporting our children's education from a distance. So like the favorite teachers you had growing up, um, look for ways to try to make learning fun. Try hands-on activities like puzzles, painting, drawing, and crafts. Consider starting a journal with your child to document this time and start a conversation about your shared experience. This is a strange time for all of us, but it can provide an opportunity to be creative and try something new. As you talk with your children about how they're doing, you're likely to find that just like adults, they miss their friends too. Help your children stay connected socially while you help them stay home and stay safe. Reach out to friends and family via phone and video chats, or write cards and letters to family members whom they may not be able to visit at this time. The transition to being at home differs for every child and especially by age. So it's really important that you speak with your kids about how they're adjusting to being at home. Today, as I mentioned, we have two incredible guests from Lincoln Public Schools and our community learning centers who are going to share information about how you can keep kids on track with their education, as well as some creative ways to encourage learning at home. Our first guest is Jamie Cook. She is the principal at Pershing Elementary. Jamie, welcome and thank you for joining us this afternoon. Thank you so much, I appreciate the opportunity. You know, you talked a lot about some really great strategies and, and routines for parents to think about with their students. Remote learning in Lincoln Public Schools is in full swing. And at the elementary level, there are lessons for every student in preschool through fifth grade. These lessons are recorded and available to students through the LPS remote learning site on the LPS website, Google Classroom, public access and local TV, printed packets, and through a variety of education apps. We are not only providing reading and math lessons remotely to students, but also remote learning opportunities in the area of computer science, art, music, and PE through our camp remote learning site. So there's a lot of opportunities for students to continue their learning in really fun ways. Our library uh, media services has also developed daily learning challenges for elementary students. Each day is a theme with several related activities for students to participate in. It encourages students to get outside, to draw, to paint, um, using a lot of different ways for us to interact with learning. Remote learning in science and social studies has also allowed students to remotely participate in a variety of topics and lessons, such as virtual embryology for third grade students. These students have learned about the process of chick development remotely and watched live as chicks hatched. Our social studies department is also working on remote learning opportunities for students to participate in part of that heritage school experience. In addition to all of these remote learning opportunities, our teachers are posting digital read alouds for students so that they can see and listen to them read and this has been a huge hit with our students and families um, and teachers, and it's a great way to stay connected to, to each other. Our teachers are working harder than ever to create and develop lessons aligned to those district videos. They are watching those videos ahead of time to then determine what learning and information is important for students to know before they watch the video and or as a follow up. Our teachers are creative souls, and so they are singing and dancing, dressing up as characters, as historical figures, and more in order to engage our students in these fun and exciting lessons. Teachers are also continuing to provide students with feedback on assignments and are reaching out and holding virtual class meetings with students. This allows them to be able to ask questions in order to support students' learning. Teachers and our LPS staff are making efforts to reach out to our families. Um, we've done that through Google Classroom, phone calls, and Zoom meetings. 
so that our families have an opportunity to ask questions about the lessons as well. We understand that we are asking our families to be teachers at home, and this is really hard. So we are trying our best to provide families with information that they need so that they can do their best at home as well. At the same time, we also understand that this is a challenge. Uh, this is a new normal that we're all facing. And so buildings are working to really streamline communication in order to stay connected with our families. Teachers are creating organizers and one-stop shop organizers to help streamline that communication and information. Um, and this allows our families to receive a lot of information in a really, really efficient way. We want our families to know that they are not alone, that we are all in this together. And as I mentioned, our families are doing their best and these are unprecedented times to bring, and they bring about fear, worry, stress, and anxiety. Our school counselors and our school social workers are reaching out to our families to offer support and of course, our families can continue to call and email the school. Um, on the LPS website, our social workers and counselors have a site dedicated to resources and tips for families, tips for how parents can talk to their students about the pandemic, tips for um, how remote learning can be successfully implemented in their home. And a lot of that information is just trying to find structure, trying to find that time for students to sit down and participate in the learning. It's hard, it's really hard, but being outside is important too. And that's why a lot of our lessons that we've been able to incorporate have lots of ways that kids can get active and be outside. So connection is so important and we understand that. And that's why we've worked with a variety of supports within our community. And we are so incredibly grateful to our entire community for embracing remote learning in a variety of ways. We are all doing all that we can and prioritizing what needs to be prioritized and here for each other and staying connected is key in getting through this together. Thank you so much, Jamie. We're so grateful to you and everyone at LPS and all that you've done to help all of us adapt to remote learning and ensure that our kids stay safe and healthy and engaged. And you're doing such a great job. My kids are worried they're never gonna get snow days in the future. <laughs> um, Next, we're going to hear from Nola Derby Bennett at the director of Lincoln's Community Learning Centers, and she's going to talk about the great work of the CLCs to adapt and to continue to provide their crucial services remotely. Um, over to you, Nola. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Um, I think one of the things that I really want to impress is that um, the CLCs are still here for you. The CLCs are um, an incredible resource both for our students and for our families. And so um, I'm excited to have this opportunity to share a few of the things that are going on uh, related to community learning centers to support both our students and our families. Um, Jamie talked a lot about the amazing academic um, support and work that is happening through remote learning through LPS. And um, when most people think of CLCs, they think of the before and after school programming. Well, we've moved that remotely too. So we've actually published an online folder full of more than um, 100 uh, after school style academic and enrichment activities for students of all ages. So there, um, there's, there's folders that are available for um, kindergarten all the way up to 12th grade students, activities that um, students can participate in. And um, we are updating that folder weekly um, our curriculum and our um, school community coordinator teams are all working um, diligently at this point to um, continue to add uh, materials and uh, links to academic and enrichment activities um, that students can engage in and just have fun at home um, with their learning. Um, the, these uh, activities are actually located in a Google folder, so they're available for anyone. You don't have to have a password to get into them. So um, I know that some of the remote learning is um, understandably password protected, but this is out there and anybody with a link can get to it. And so the link, um, the easiest way to find the link is on the CLC website, which is clc.lps.org. But you can also um, find the CLC Facebook page and the link to the, our Google folder is pinned right on the top of the page. So you can access that folder um, from our CLC Facebook page as well. 
Um, on that, in that folder, we have lots of great activities and instructions for how to do fun things. Um, but we also have links to free websites um, that have cool activities, um, both in, on the academic side and on the enrichment side. And um, those are a from a variety of different sources, both worldwide um, links um, and local opportunities that are available. We have a lot of uh, local partners that are posting lots of really fun things for um, young people to do. Uh, some of the favorites at my house, I'll tell you, I have a third grader. Some of our favorites in the folder are the welcome spring activities. There's about 25 of them. Um, so that's been really helping us in our house to get outside and to um, enjoy the change of the seasons while we've been at home. Um, another favorite that just got added last week was um, Goldberg. Um, videos so we've been watching and creating a lot of rube, rube goldbergs at my house um and then related to parent and community engagement because that is the other kind of arm of community learning centers um, our school community coordinators have been doing a lot of outreach to families what we're hearing is that parents are very overwhelmed there's a lot going on um both just in terms of be now becoming um home classroom teachers but also being at home all day with our children, um, that's a different uh, scenario for a lot of us. And so our school community coordinators are reaching out um, on, to families, just checking in to see if there's any needs that, they that we can help out with. We know that a lot of people um, are struggling with um, being laid off from their jobs right now. And so um, helping with any resources that might be available out in the community that people aren't aware of. Last week, as a matter of fact, we had a, um, a parent reach out to the school asking for um, an antenna because their children needed to be able to tune in to uh, watch the online academic instruction and they needed an antenna because they didn't have one for their TV. So we were able to locate an antenna and now those students have the opportunity to tune in to um, the, the remote learning that's happening through their television set at home. So. Um, those are the kind of things that we're happy to, you know, search and find the resources for. Um, we're also providing social connections and um, we've seen um, virtual coffees and community cafes start to pop up. So parents are looking for ways to support one another. We also um, miss those adult connections. And so being able to just sit down and have coffee with the parents who you used to stand next to on the playground while your children were walking into the school building and have a conversation, um, those relationships are continuing to happen virtually through connections um, through our community learning centers. I know that um, coming up this next week, we have a middle school that's hosting a family bingo night. Uh, so lots of great um, continued connections with our families and um, support for them, um, in, again, in this unprecedented time. The goal for us is really to provide support and those community connections, just like we do when we're present in the school. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Nola, for everything you and the King Centers are doing to keep our, our kids and families connected and engaged. The uh, City of Lincoln is so proud to partner with you. We're so proud to have such a strong public school system. Jamie, thank you for being with us. And, you know, and also in Lincoln, we're very lucky to have amazing libraries and museums and other learning opportunities to complement these. Um, during the pandemic, many of the activities that we love are actually still available online for kids and adults to enjoy. Uh, I'd like to just share a few of those quickly. Um, while all in-person programming at our Lincoln libraries remain canceled, our city libraries are offering an online spring into reading challenge to encourage reading and engage children, families, and adults in activities to keep them healthy, happy, and busy. Participants can log their reading time and earn tickets to receive prizes. And you can find more information about how to get involved and sign up for this program at lincolnlibraries.org. Uh, the University of Nebraska's Morrill Hall State Museum has a number of at-home activities, including virtual field trips, astronomy at home, and video learning sessions with different themes each week. You can find all of these activities online by visiting museum.unl.edu. And the Lincoln Children's Museum is sharing boredom busters videos on Facebook every day at 10.30 a.m. These videos encourage children to create, discover, and learn with a mix of activities, experiments, videos, books, songs, jokes, and more. You can find more about this program, the boredom busters, at lincolnchildrensmuseum.org.
And next, we want to talk about the census. We just want to remind everyone how important it is to complete the 2020 census. The great news is that Nebraska is still in the top five states with the highest census response rate. 58.3% have participated so far in Nebraska. And Lancaster County also continues to beat the average response rate for the state with 64.5%. Our high response rate shows what we already know, that in Lincoln, everyone matters and everyone counts. And completing the census is safe, easy, and confidential, and it's a great way to support our community. The census contains just 10 simple questions that take less than 10 minutes to complete. It's really critical to get an accurate account of uh, every resident because it ensures that we receive our fair share of federal resources. And that's about $20,000 in local support for every person who is counted. And these dollars help pay for important resources that we count on and our families count on, like school lunches and, of course, our streets. Right now, uh, people who have not responded to the census yet will be receiving a paper form by mail. Census workers will begin canvassing neighborhoods door to door on August 11th, uh, depending on the status of the pandemic. Um, and they'll be following up with people who haven't filled out their forms. But because of the pandemic, we really do want to minimize any sort of door to door contact. So that means filling out your census form and mailing it back as soon as possible is more important than ever before. And again, you can complete the census online anytime if you go to my2020census.gov. Finally, I would like to provide an update on our health department's efforts to reduce the risk of COVID-19 exposure uh, for those in our community who are experiencing homelessness. Because the coronavirus is highly contagious, it's extremely important to create physical distance between individuals, particularly those who are living in large group environments, such as the People's City Mission. This physical separation decreases the likelihood that the virus will spread. And as we mentioned at a previous briefing, 56 women and children were relocated from the People's City Mission to secure temporary housing over two weeks ago. And many of these families are now preparing to relocate to permanent housing through the link that had been established at the mission for those who may have been exposed to COVID-19 but who don't yet display the symptoms. These were important first steps to preventing the spread of the virus among some of the most vulnerable members of our community. Well, now I'm happy to share that Manzito Construction has worked with the People's City Mission and our Lincoln Lancaster County Health Department to provide tomorrow is Arbor Day, a celebration of trees that began right here in Nebraska. The Arbor Day Foundation is promoting Arbor Day at Home campaign. And for all those who want to celebrate our tree planting holiday while practicing physical distancing, the foundation will plant one tree in our nation's forests for each time the hashtag Hashtag Arbor Day at Home is used on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. Again, that's hashtag Arbor Day at Home. You are also invited to visit CelebrateArborDay.com for educational resources about trees for kids, ideas for nature-based crafts, and more. Our Parks and Recreation Department was planning a major tree planting event for tomorrow to celebrate Arbor Day, but that has been postponed until at least the fall. The weather the next day looks, the next few days looks beautiful, um, so I hope that I encourage you all to celebrate Arbor Day within your, your family household units and uh, to enjoy it in a different way this year. And finally, I want to extend my best wishes to the Muslims in our community and your families and friends as you welcome the beginning of Ramadan. Ramadan is a time for reflection, devotion, and compassion toward others, something we all need fiercely right now. Many will fast during Ramadan and share break the fast meals with family after sunset and engage in acts of service. So to our Muslim friends, I wish you a happy Ramadan or Ramadan Mubarak. And with that, we'll open it up for questions from the media. Director Lopez is Lopez still here. Is still here. Riley from the Journal Star. Riley. For the mayor and or the director. What time frame for making a decision on extending or um, removing measures in the direct health measure are you looking at? I mean, do you want to have several days notice or is it a May 5th for May 6th type of decision? 
I will turn that over to Director Lopez, but just say that we know how important it is to try to give people the ability to uh, prepare for any changes that may be coming. Um, we, of course, are having to deal with a really fluid, rapidly evolving situation, and the data changes so much day to day, as you've seen in the number of people reporting that they have been diagnosed with COVID-19. So we will do our best to get the kind of information that will help our community out there as much in advance as possible, recognizing that it will be constrained by the rapidly evolving nature of this virus. And I'll let Director Lopez come up and answer more specific to your question. Good afternoon, Riley. Um, actually, as the mayor said, we're looking day to day. You know, our directed health measures are in place until May 6th. And one of our key indicators is our uh, amount of testing that's being done, that positivity rate that I share with you um, every day now. And then uh, looking at the number of, of new cases that we have. So we consider all those measures together and trying to look forward into when we can start changing some of our directed health measures. And we're actively working on that and what it would look like. And I hope in the next week or so, what the mayor will be starting to talk about some of those areas that we could look at as a community and moving forward. But we're really at a key point right now um, in where the virus is in our community. You know, all week our numbers have been rising. Um, we know that uh, between um, this act today and tomorrow, uh, we're going to have uh, almost 300 tests done related to some of the outbreak in the Crete area. So many of those individuals um, live in Lancaster County, so we'll be watching that and reporting, reporting back to you and keeping you aware of what's happening. And of course, you can always go to the website and look at the graphics that are, are updated twice a day. Follow up to that, Director. To what degree of confidence um, do you have in the um, amount of testing available to really tell you if um, the peak we will see is a true peak and not maybe a false peak um, that you would be looking to avoid? Well, they, um, we're really asking once again for the community's help in going in to get testing. Uh, we've been able to secure additional tests uh, for uh, Lincoln, and we really want people to get in and get testing. And we are looking, uh, there's a predictive model that we look, look at, Riley, and we consider all these numbers and work through those. Um, we have experience, for example, looking at influenza. We know how the cases go and how the rate rises. And then when there's some peak and maybe a little downplay and go back up. So these are all public health tools that we're familiar with and work with in the community. Even though this pandemic is different, there are some things uh, in tracking uh, disease process that are very familiar. Director Lopez, this is Bill Shamer with 1011. Quick follow up for you. Um, on the Smithfield meatpacking plant. Do you know how many of the 106 in Lancaster County are tied to that? Or is it still one that you mentioned earlier this week? Uh, you know, right now, Bill, we're still investigating and we'll be able to give you a better um, response to that as we complete investigation and as more tests come in. Uh, we don't have a high number in our community. But it, as you start looking at what's happening across the state in some areas um, like Madison County, where they started out with a smaller number and then that number's grown uh, up in Dakota County, though that <clears throat> those things are happening there. So we're being very cautious and uh, we've activated very quickly with our sister health department uh, that's leading this uh, public health solutions to offer uh, testing to the community members. Any other questions from the media? All right, thank you for tuning in. Thank you to our guests for being here today. Um, stay healthy, stay home, and stay connected. We'll see you tomorrow at 3.30.